Welcome to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal, where our goal is to change the way you practice dentistry by helping you achieve clinical, financial, and personal balance. Now, here's your host, T-Bone. Back for another week, another episode. I want to thank you for listening. For those of you that are first-time listeners, where you been? Uh, We're here from Studio 3D and excited to have a great guest on for this week. And before we get to this week's guest, and by the way, it's getting close to the end of the year. Now's a great time to be thinking about next year, to kind of get things going, whatever goals you may have for next year. Now is the time to get those things implementing so you hit the ground running. January 1st is not when you want to start with these goals. You want to start now. So let's turn it over to Meredith, and she's going to give you a 3D Dentist update. Hi, everyone. I have a review before we get started. This one says five stars, first of all. Most important part. It's one of the better dental podcasts out there. T-Bone is a smart and practical person to listen to on changing your practice for the better. Very nice. But even more important for a podcast, he's like able and entertaining. His recommendations are helpful and wise to implement. I feel like he is more transparent than other podcasts and how he feels a practice should change for improvement. That's right. How kind. That is very nice. And and that's because... um, that's because I just screwed that up, but that's because I'm a transparent person, even though I'm brown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's hard, hard to be transparent <laughs> you're still when, you're always, when you're always winning, right? Yeah. It's I'm hard very, to be transparent when you're always winning. Well, I'm well, not always winning. That's <laughs> part of the problem. Well, for an update on 3D Dennis, um, we had the most fun at our 3D Cup yeah, golf tournament. Yeah, that was so much fun. Uh, T Bone's team. Speaking it. of winning, T Bone's team won. Again. Shocker. Team JP. Shout yeah. out to them. To the winners. I carried the team. Okay. Your back hurt that That's, whole next week. That was from something else, but yeah. <laughs> Walking all this. Yeah. Coughing. Getting so, kicked um, out of my golf club. Yeah, we're getting to the end of the year. <laughs> next year, we'll have some fun things like golf tournaments that are open, open registration. Uh, if you're not already doing implants, now is a great time. We only have a few spots left in our digital implant continuum starting With in January patients. and March. We will have I live patients. I want everybody to know there's live patients in that. At both weekends. Yeah. So live patients once. extraction grafting and then live patients with uh, guided implant placement it's phenomenal yeah yeah so all right let's invite our guest on uh, this week i am uh, proud and happy to have a, uh, a fellow brown person <laughs> Thank you. on today's podcast. I mean, why, why not? This has it, been happening more recently. Why? We've had brown people on recently? Yeah, should are we? People, are people, yeah, are people going to complain that I'm bringing too many brown people on? <laughs> no, I think you're good. <laughs> I just want to know if I need to change things. We do live in a, a white people's world, you know? So. <laughs> You know, I Here I am to balance you guys out. Yeah. You should see the color balance on me and Tebow. Yeah, cl- clearly. <laughs> I'm so pale. <laughs> I mean, if it goes from light to dark. Yeah, it really does. We're sitting in yeah. order. Uh, Dimple Tejani is uh, in Chicago, actually, Allerton Heights, Illinois, which is outside yes. of Chicago. And she is the owner of the Heights Dental Gallery. Dimple, how are you doing? I'm great. It's great. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. You said this is way outside your comfort zone. Yeah, it is. Why? <laughs> It'll be okay. I'm not uh, one to like speak openly or in public, or yeah. but it's kind of nice to do this. Well, your friends. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, of course. Well, your friends said that you didn't like people. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. On the day, you know. Yeah, like me, too. me too. Me <laughs> too. Me too. I, I don't like people at many times either. You know, it's uh, it's not good news. But uh, so listen, I was uh, listening in your um, reading on your website, mm-hmm. and something caught my eye. And it said, uh, uh, quote, uh, follow in my mom's footsteps. Correct. Tell us about that. Um, so my mom uh, is a dentist, and she just retired, actually, uh, March 12th at 70. And the last day that we were allowed to practice in Chicago when everything shut down for COVID. Is that why she stopped, do you think? Um, well, she retired. She tried to retire a couple of years ago, and then uh, my father passed away, and then she got bored again and then went back to work. Okay. And um, then worked for another couple years and then it was her birthday on March 12th at 70 and it was the day that we shut down. Was it planned or unplanned? No, she just decided, you know, I'm done after this, but she practiced for a long time. So, um, and I admire her. Everything I've become and done is because of her. 
So, did so you guys did ever work together? We didn't. Okay. We didn't. So I where did was she practicing? Office. She was in. The, she was in the city. Um, she worked with public aid for since 1980. Get out of here! Yeah, in Chicago. In Chicago, in Ooh, public aid. That's like legit public aid. She too. did. Yeah, she did it for. Uh, she started in 81, and she's been through multiple. At one point, she had three practices. Her own practice, not public she aid was, practices. Well, she was in medical clinics with, okay. with, yeah. But they were her private practices in there. So. Wow. Yeah. So that's very different from what you're doing, though. Very different. Yeah, which is why I didn't end up practicing with her, because I was actually more, of the, you know, the suburban, traditional type of a practice that I wanted to you're be You're a soccer in. mom. <laughs> I, I am a soccer Well, yeah, I'm a lacrosse football mom, so okay. yes. <laughs> okay, interesting. All right. That's awesome. So, um... So you followed in your mom's footsteps. Yes. You guys never practiced together. Never practiced together. How did her type of dentistry influence you? So I learned a lot of prosthetics from her. Um, she did, um, she's very good at dentures and extractions. That's kind of like was her bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So growing up, I went to work with her, um, you know, in the summers. I'd go there and do like her filing and her charting and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Good Indian kids had to do yeah, that. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't really have a choice. It was either that <laughs> or... Resume yeah. building. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I did that too and I'm not Indian. <laughs> well, we I did it. it. <laughs> we did it to build college applications. Right. Well, I My dad paid it. me. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to be a dentist, to be quite honest. I wanted to be a doctor, and dentistry was oh, my so backup. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> it was my backup. I'm whoa, not going to lie. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You, just so you know, we That's are doctors. That's a sweet doctors. spot for doctors. We are doctors. You know, you know so he's going to be a medical doctor. He's, ma he's married to a real doctor. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. She's just a psychiatrist. That's actually what I wanted to do. You want to do psychiatry? I wanted to do psychi psychiatry. I did. Well, yeah. now you spend plenty of time there, so yeah, you're fine. Much. I feel like that's what I, I don't do want my. I, I don't want. I don't want our listeners to think I'm being mean to you. I no, just, no, no. We I have. Know. We've known each other for a little bit, <laughs> so I like great. making fun. You know, <laughs> might as well. Yeah. He yeah. also spends every day at a psychiatrist halfway. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of nice. Our office is half psychiatry. So, well, she's not a great psychiatrist. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. She's not she doing it. She picks and chooses. She has built her practice where she can pick and choose her patients, and she does not choose you. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, was your mom hurt that you didn't want to do her style of dentistry? No, no. I think she wanted me to do more of the traditional suburban, like build your own practice, do a little bit of everything, that sort of thing. So, um, and to be honest, I don't think I ever asked her. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, my dad was. I, I believe my dad was a little disappointed in me that I didn't do. Uh, or tr a more traditional uh, model like him. My dad was a dentist in oh, India. Okay. Never practiced here. Okay. But uh, so he didn't expect me to work on the streets and stuff like right, Indian right, dentists, right? right, right. right? Uh, but not that he worked in the military. But um, he wanted me to be a very insurance-driven, open five, six, seven days a week. You know, very, uh, you know, very typical. Uh, business minded, you know, we, we grew up in cockroach motels. Uh, so o owning a cockroach motel, but um, so he wanted me to do that. But I, I think it took him a while to understand how I wanted to have a more tr traditional, I, 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 I wouldn't even say more traditional, I wanted to have a uh, practice that wasn't uh, that was built on being great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. even want to say traditional. I, I wanted to be it wasn't about money for me. It was about I wanted to be recognized. I wanted to be good at what I did. You know, that was important to me. And it sounds like that's important to you. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. A leader yeah. in the community. Kind it's of, hence yeah. why we struggle getting associates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so along that subject, uh, <clears throat> what is it that you or, and or your practice, what, what is it that you want it to be known for? Um, caring, compassionate. Um, oh. No, but it's really that and kind of the best at my game yeah. like okay. a good dentist I want people to um be proud to tell somebody else that hey that's my dentist she did this or referring people or you know I want to be known but how does one measure that because because the reason here's why I asked Dimple yeah okay is I've never met a dentist who says they're not good okay I've never met a dentist who doesn't say well we care about our patients you know, I've never met a practice that doesn't say those things. And so, you know, I'm not saying you're not those things. Right. I'm just saying, how do we, you know, ultimately that's an internal, it's like I, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? Sure. So how do we measure, how do you measure that? And it's not even we, how do you measure I'm achieving that or I'm, I'm, I'm living up to this standard? I think for me personally, I gauge it off of how my patients interact with me. Mm -hmm. 
if they tell me they had a great experience, if they tell me, wow, you're a painless dentist, or wow, I've been scared to go to the dentist for years, but you've changed it for me. Okay. Or I've had, I've had patients literally who have made appointments and have called from the parking lot and crying in their car saying, I can't get out of the car. Yeah, I have people that cry from the car too. You know, that couldn't even come in, <laughs> eventually made it into my the office. <laughs> <laughs> eventually made it into my office and we changed their whole life. You know, we might have done a full transformation for them. Mm -hmm. And then I get that recognition or that, you know, that appreciation from them that makes me feel good. It makes me realize that I'm doing something good that's worthy, that is of value, okay. and that's helping someone. And reviews. And reviews. I mean, not in this day and you age, know? yeah, reviews is obviously Online. where you get a lot of your recognition. Yeah. I mean, we have a really our social media is I'm on top of it. I, I read my reviews. I'm really big on my Yelp reviews. Um, Google reviews. I read what people have to say. I take things personally. If something is not right, I try to fix it. If it's, if they're not happy. Um, yeah. You know, it's very interesting. Um, with two different measures of success mm -hmm. and not right or wrong. What, it's interesting because as you're talking about these things, I'm thinking to myself, how would I answer this question, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And you focus so much on the patient, mm -hmm. so much. It's clear to me, mm -hmm. right? If I were answering the question, I'd be like, I want my colleagues to recognize that I do good dentistry. Right. I want, you know, I want to, you know, all of these things, right? And it's, it's just, it was just interesting to me that we think differently, differently. but ultimately we achieve the same thing, right? Right. right. Uh, and, but I did notice that you, you didn't talk so much about you talk more about the emotional outcome, not necessarily the clinical outcome. And, and that's interesting because ultimately, I think one of the things that people, our profession does need to recognize is that it's, it's really about how the patient perceives us. Is not really whether we have a 50 micron margin or a 100 mm -hmm. micron margin. Mm -hmm. It's really whether the patient... Uh, you know, perceives us as being very good. Absolutely. You know? And I think early, I mean, I've been doing, I've been out for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so the first, I would say four to five years of my career when I didn't have my own practice and I was working for another doctor, um, that was important to me, right? Because it was all about, you got out of dental school and everything had to be perfect and your margins and everything was measured to the T. And that's what it was all about. It wasn't about the patient or it mm. wasn't about like, is this painless for you or not? How do you feel? You know, how do you feel? Done. Like, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a good person. I have a good heart. I care about what people think. But at the same time, it was all about the mechanical part of dentistry mm -hmm. early on. And I think the that... The Instagram part of dentistry. Yeah. And then <laughs> there once was no I had my own practice, it changed. Because then it was my practice. And right. it's it stands for who I am and what I believe in and how I want people to see me. Um, so then it shifted and by then you're a better dentist, right? You're five yeah. years out. <laughs> um, when do you think you became a good dentist? Right when I bought my practice, probably it was like five years out of school. Um, I had some good early mentors that I worked with that, um, taught me even more perfectionism mm -hmm. <laughs> than I needed probably. Sure. Um, but I, um, I would say about five, six years in terms of dentistry. Yeah, I, I was... I wasn't at my peak, but no, I was sure. no, 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 it, way it, better than, you know. It, it's interesting because I thought I was good when a couple of years out of school. Yeah. But I didn't really, I didn't, I, I didn't see mistakes. I didn't see follow-ups. Right. I didn't see things. I was so limited in my mindset that I didn't think I really hit my stride. And that wasn't my peak. You know, that right. wasn't, uh, I didn't feel like I hit my stride until about year five or six. Yeah. Is it's interesting you say that yeah, like that confidence came then. Yeah, I wasn't second guessing things. I wasn't thinking about it when I got home, you know yeah. those kinds of things. Or did I do that right? Did I do that wrong? No, I I was pretty confident in my ability. Yeah. Because you had seen work. I mean, yeah. things are going to fail in a couple of three yeah. years yeah. typically. Yeah, and you kind of learn how to troubleshoot yeah. things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So you know, um, so you uh, how how did like so if you were if we were to talk clinically, mm -hmm. okay. What would you say clinically you want to be known for? What, what, if I came to your practice, what is it that you like to do the most? Right now, I mean, I love my CEREC. Okay. Anything CEREC related, I'm having yeah. a good day. What, what are you doing with CEREC? Are you doing single teeth, anterior teeth? Quad, quadrant. I try to do a lot of quadrant dentistry. Okay, I so love posterior? doing quadrant. Yeah. yeah, just because it's a nice outcome. Patients see a nice... Change, change from you know especially when you're doing like removing old amalgams you're like mm -hmm. fixing a whole quad well, productivity from black wise to white. yeah it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's great. fun and i don't want to less patience exactly yeah good production it's fun yeah how'd you get involved in CERC? 
Um, I got my Cerec, I believe, was it 2010? Okay. So um, about 10 years ago. Yeah, about 10 so years. So that was uh, before Blue, Omnicam. That was Blue Cam. Blue Cam yeah. is when I started. Um, I honestly, I just had a rep that came by. Um, they need to make a sale. You need to buy something. <laughs> Pretty much. Another yeah. phone um, <laughs> rep. But he was, yeah, he came over and uh, that was kind of how I was introduced to it. And I thought, this is awesome. So How'd you dive deep in Cerec? Well, so you had the course, you know, you got a free course when you yeah, bought your Cerec. So I went training, to, yeah. I went to Cerec doctors yeah. and then I just kind of just did one, two, three. I just kind of did them all. You and dove deep. I, yeah. I mean, it was like all or nothing. That's the thing. Like if I'm going to do something, it's either all or nothing. Yeah. So I, it's kind of just what happened. I love it. Yeah. That's good. So. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Why don't you share with us something that's going well in your practice, I think, that you think our audience could learn from you or that you'd just like to share with them? Right now, it's kind of tough because of after COVID, but I think that... Um, what is COVID? <laughs> I know. Huh? It's been it's COVID been doesn't exist on the T-Bone Speaker. I'm really big on systems and following like rules. And so for me, coming back after COVID was... Um, like having to make new systems for everything was very difficult. Okay. Like I had everybody had to, you know, there Change. were so many changes and we yeah. all had to do that. Um, so I don't know, going well right now, I, I feel like we're, we're just doing well in general. We're surviving, you know, we're mm -hmm. getting used to the changes. Um, communication has been a big thing in my office that I'm very proud of. Um, uh, are you referring to communication within each other or to t patients? With my team. Okay. I mean, with our, with our patients, it's always good, but I try to, um, I have tried to keep a team where um, we can all get along, where the communication is there, where if there's any issues, where, because I worked in offices before I had my own practice where, you know, you have a, a practice with like 10, 15 people together and it gets, when we were talking about this mm -hmm. earlier, it gets catty or it gets misconstrued. That's only when you have 10, 15 women. Yeah, yeah. well, that's what, we're, gonna that's say, what we were drama? talking about. <laughs> the drama. And so... You know, I, Meredith's <laughs> middle name is drama. <laughs> I also don't worry. It, it's only me and him. <laughs> but I think like I said, that, <laughs> drama. <laughs> I think that that's I I do take pride in that in my office that, that you have drama no, no that we, that oh. we have none. limited you know limited. it's, it's no, there's no yeah. such thing as not trying to keep it, it, it I I have I've always had a good team um, and I think we work well and you know and it showed when we came back after COVID everybody was able to kind of come back together and work together I didn't lose anybody it was it's it's been pretty good. So I don't know if that's really a takeaway, but no, I mean, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> I mean, well, what I what I take away from that is that you've laid a foundation. Mm -hmm. You've got team members committed when they're going. And, and look, Chicago isn't. A, I don't want to say this is going to come across the right, wrong way, but Chicago, as it re pertains to COVID, mm -hmm. Chicago isn't a great area. Yeah, okay, exactly. it, it has been an area that has been from the very beginning a large outbreak, yes. a lot of political stuff going on course, there, yep. a lot of socioeconomic stuff going on there. It's a wonderful city, mm -hmm. one of my favorite big cities. Yeah. You know, and, and the suburbs are a great place to live and work and do all of those things. But if you if you your team hasn't bought into that 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 level of hype where they're like, oh I don't want to come back or I don't want to do that. So that speaks volumes to what you've done. And it speaks volumes to how you're communicating with things. Um, so, so I, yeah, I mean, there's Thank a lot you. of tips there. I mean, Thanks. there's, that's, that's important. I mean, look, <clears throat> you know, I, I had a podcast, I don't know how long ago it was, but the number one product in everybody's practice is people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not implants, it's not veneers, it's not Invisalign, sure, smile, whatever. It's people, mm -hmm. you know, the people are the product that you sell because at the end of the day, you and I sell the same thing. Right. Okay. It's people. At the end of the day, we sell, at 3D Dentist, we sell training. Right. There's a lot of places to get training. Right. But it's about the people. What we sell are people. I mean, we sell us. E either we're the right personality for you guys, it's the right philosophy, or it's not. Right. So the number one product in every practice is people. It's the number one resource that we have. So we've got to invest in people, and, and clearly you are. And people reinvest and stick around when they love who they're for. And, and, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but clearly you, you demand excellence. Right. Right. So it's not like you're the easiest person to work with. No. Right? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah, right. But, but listen, there's, I will always argue there's a breed of people. 
I, in fact, we've had people that come to our office as, in, as team members where they want somebody to give them direction. They want to feel like they're making progress and they don't want the easy street. Right. You know, and I think, right. um, I think you know, it, unfortunately, it's hard sometimes, but there, there is a select group of people that are looking for that. And I don't think anything, it's ever anything to be ashamed of. Yeah. You know, I think what's important is, is learning to adjust to that when, when, you, yeah. when you're becoming overbearing. And, you know, luckily I have my wife giving me medications for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, where do you see yourself three to five years from now? Um, so there's definitely a frontier that I haven't taken on yet. And we talked mm-hmm. about this earlier is I haven't placed an implant yet, which ever, ev- well, school, I mean, residency, no, no, I, I private t- practice. I've taken courses before where I've placed them on but dummies I d- on, on no, Pipodons? like on uh, pig, pig. Oh uh, yeah. yeah like know, dead things. Yeah. yeah. Dead things. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's just like the one thing. And I thought to myself, um, if I were to retire early, like let's say I retired in five years, I mean, I think 25 years is a long time in dentistry, mm-hmm. so I could Me technically yeah. <laughs> retire. I'm well, feeling it. I'm 20 I, years I am in. too. So 21 years in. I'm yeah. starting to think to myself, and I'm like, if I were to, to retire, what would be my regret? And it would be that I d- didn't get into implants. And I put it off. I put it off. I always had an excuse. Yeah. I always had an excuse. I didn't have my comb beam, or I didn't have this, or I didn't have that, or it was too busy, or my kids are at this age where they need me, and I don't have time to do all this, and... I couldn't find an associate to find time to do it. Um, so that would be the thing that I would like to see myself in three to five years. I'm placing implants. I'm doing the big cases and just doing the fun stuff. And I've got an associate that I like um, that is doing the stuff I don't want to do anymore. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, you know, so that's kind of my goal. Okay. And sleep is going really well in sleep, your office. Yeah, we're enjoying that. We're really, I'd, I want to get more into that. Yeah. Um, and that sleep is important to me too because I, I got. When we more say sleep, we're referring to sleep apnea. Sleep apnea, yeah. yeah. That has been kind of like a soft spot for me too because my daughter, um, who's 14, she wears an appliance. I, I diagnosed her when she was very young. What did you think of Dolphy's lecture today? I was like, it almost brought me to tears yeah. because he was, it just, it was everything that I went through as a parent with her. Um, and you know. just so our listeners know, Ralph Dolphy, who happens to live here and speaks for Healthy Start, he came in mm-hmm. today and did a little talk about getting started with Healthy Start. Yeah. And, yep. and, um, and, and like when my daughter was, she's 14, but when she was younger, I knew about all this stuff, but I didn't know about these particular appliances. Mm-hmm. I wish I had known a little bit I mean, more right about that. I mean, around 50 years. Can you believe that? When he said that, I was disturbed that I didn't <laughs> know about it, yeah. you know? But, um, so that's why I really, I do enjoy sleep because I, I do take it at, take it to heart and I, I really want to help people that need it yeah. and the kids it's it's amazing the stuff that mm-hmm. you can do now yeah. for kids too yeah so. that's pretty amazing so three to five years you want to be placing implants yes you know we're going to make that happen in yes. less than three to five yes. years <laughs> yes 100%. but but uh big well you you're, you know you're taking and thank you by the way for supporting my my, my, my kids thank you <laughs> <laughs> my kids thank you my golf membership, thank well, you, Well, I'm too. excited to at least have an excuse to get out of Chicago. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. come visit. You're going to yeah. love it. The yeah. live, pa- the yeah. live patient program is phenomenal. Yeah, okay. gonna we're going to push great. you a little bit, and okay. we're going to support you to make sure that we get started. I'm super excited. So so let's talk about that, okay? Mm-hmm. So so I take it to heart when people come through and, and they want to, hey, I want to do implants. Mm-hmm. And I have, some, I have some fears internally for you. Okay. You know, of my own, not for you, but... <laughs> No, he gets me. emotional I for know, everyone. I know. No, I, but he I, just wants you to be successful. Right. right. You know, well, I, well selfishly, I want to be successful, right? Right. I don't want anybody to take any of our programs and not go back and do it. But the reality is some do. Sure. And and so in just in a brief conversation with you today, I, you know, I, you're busy. Yes. Okay. You know, and I think the busyness gets in the way of these advanced procedures. In 100%. fact, being busy for 20 years is the reason you haven't done it yet. It's you know, 100% been, true. You know, you've been trying to take the program for a year. Busyness is what's taken you a year to get finally registered, right? Yes. You know, and so, so I, I worry about that for you because some of the goals that you, that you want for three to five years from now uh, require, honestly, they're all dependent on you. Time, yeah, yeah. time too. Well, he's going to depend one thing. He's going to force you between one, weekends one and three. Mm-hmm. He makes everyone schedule their first five patients. Re- five? Yeah. So, so when you come in March, you'll have to schedule your patients for the week you get back in April. Like, 
Yeah. So oh, okay. what we do is between uh, the two two live weekends. Okay. Uh, what what we'll ask, and so you know in advance, is we'll ask you to find five patients. Okay. Whether they're free, what I don't care. I mean, there's no excuse for not finding five patients. Okay. And our ask is because we can do free implants. Of course, okay? yeah. Discounted. Of course. Yeah. Full yeah. price. Yeah. Insurance. Yeah. I already only. know who I'm. I mean, you're brown. Yeah. 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 You no, I already know who <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, you know, I think the, most people have listen to this podcast. Oh, she's offering free implants. <laughs> well, I'm coming. The embarrassing part is I have patients in my practice who I've been telling for years yeah. that oh and they're waiting on you. My, yeah they're like have you done it yet like they stop and they want me. and they want you well, well, they don't yeah. want to go to other it's, people it's like I'm you know like, they yeah, trust you it's, it's time. so he makes you schedule these so that when you get back there's no excuse like well I don't have time right it's like oh no no you've already got those pr- scheduled well, I'm going to ask you to pre-block Okay. So what's the second weekend? April something? Yeah. The let's pretend April. it's let's pretend the second weekend ends April twenty fifth. Okay. okay. So then you're gonna be back at work on the twenty seventh. Okay. That that week you're gonna block two hours each day for one implant a day for nice. the whole week. Okay. So that's our commitment. And when you leave that weekend from us, mm-hmm. you will have your you'll bring all your patient data with you. We will plan your implants together so okay. that we we we're, we're over with you know, we're overseeing it. We'll design your guides, we'll print your guides. We'll give you everything that you need so that you have everything ready for those patients. Nice. And then and you don't lose your momentum. Yeah, okay. and that way your momentum, you get the momentum, your team gets the momentum. And it, it's really important to win right away. One of the challenges with sleep is you don't win right away. Yeah. You know, one of the challenges with cosmetic classes that you take, you don't win right away. Right. Yeah. You know, or right. full mouth rehabs, you don't go back and have one the next week. Right. Uh, so one of the benefits of the multi-weekend programs is we'll go ahead and commit that we need this we need these five two hour blocks to place these implants and it's such a fun week because everybody's doing their implants and everybody's sending them and comparing x-rays and it's just like such a fun week for everybody i'm really excited about everyone's cheering you on so and then you'll do you know the four or five implants while you're here that weekend and Mm -hmm. you'll you'll be ready okay you know you're going to be ready so i'm uh, I'm really ready i am So Next let's time. talk about this associate. Okay. <laughs> okay. The non-existent We're going to go there. <laughs> yeah, <Yep>. Of course. <laughs> yep. Because yep. you mentioned, if you said no, Michael. Yeah, that's what's going to give you the time. Well, I, I heard a couple of things at, <laughs> at, at, at dinner today. Okay. Uh, or maybe this was before dinner. Yes. That, uh, you mentioned that you're feeling bored. Yes. Okay. You, uh, you even used the B-U-R-N word. <laughs> okay. The burnout <laughs> word. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so, and then we talked a little bit about associates, mm-hmm. you know, my struggles, mm-hmm. um, which are some of the similar struggles that you yes. probably have mentally. Yes. Um, so, you know, we have to, we, there's no perfect time. It's like having a kid. You didn't plan to have your kids. I assume yeah. they kind of yeah. just yeah. happened. Right. Yeah. And so, um, I think you have to start setting the stage now. I think you're right. You know, and yeah. I, and I think part of winning at the game of associates is the first step, and it took my wife to work with me on this, is to recognize they're not going to be you. You know, yeah. because if they were you, they'd own their own practice. Right, right. You know, so you... Well, you, you also don't want to... We can't deal with two of you. No, no, <laughs> but let's take the personality... But it's not I'm even joking. the person. Uh, no, you're yeah, right, you're right. You know, but not even the personality part of it. It's the... It's our level of commitment and drive. Right, and the you know, s- speed and efficiency mm-hmm. and yeah. what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, That's so... You have to, you, you're going to have to, it was, it's, it's been very hard for me. Okay. And so I know it's going to be hard for you yeah, uh, because we're built very similar in that sense. Yeah. So you have to do that. And, and you know, the things that you want to do, the more fun things, you know, things that you mm-hmm. like to do, mm-hmm. those don't exist without somebody else to do the dentistry that I we agree. have to do. I agree. Right. So, so they kind of go hand in hand to a certain degree. So one of the advantages that some of these younger dentists have mm-hmm is that they're doing this early in their career mm-hmm. where they're not booked. They don't have 20 years of patience that say, why can't you suddenly do my filling? So why can't you do my crown? You know, they, they have the freedom and the free time in their practice and their schedules to go ahead and implement some of these more advanced procedures. Mm-hmm. Whereas what we're trying to do is we're trying to take a busy practice and now squeeze one, one more, more thing in. in and so you're yeah. trying to sleep, squeeze sleep in. You're trying to squeeze yeah. implants in into an already, you know, un- unfortunately I heard that you have three hygienists. <laughs> 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 well, that sounds horrible. Not because of their hygienists, yeah, no, but three, it's not. checking yes, three hygienists is, at one time is, is... Those days are... Yeah, so yeah. so yeah. Imagine, yeah. imagine the stress of doing implants that day. Yeah. Or diagnosing implants and yeah. then having to go back. So, so the the real success from doing my key to my success has been making sure that 
I'm finding a w- I'm finding a way to slow down. Not my practice, mm-hmm. but I'm finding a way to slow down to create the margin or the room to be able to put these procedures into place. Yeah. So I, I think for you to hit these some of these three to five year goals, uh, you're definitely going to have to change your mindset. Absolutely. From exp- you know, unless yeah. you get like Lindsay and get lucky to find somebody great right, right off the bat, right. and you know. I can just tell you percentage-wise it doesn't exist. No, and then we talked about that earlier as I had two that I went through that it just didn't work well. It, well, it's not that it didn't work well. It's just, you know, personality, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I just got discouraged. Yeah. Don't get and d- frustrated, well, you know, you, so. Well, look, I, you know, you said some key things. You said, what if I retire early? So that means you've contemplated it. Yes. Right? And well, part of the reason why I can't see myself doing it is because I don't have an associate to even yeah. give myself a little bit of free time. Right. And so, so it's so, important. Yeah. You know, I, I, my goal, my, some, it didn't, it, it, I didn't realize this until recently. My goal for dentistry is for no dentist to practice alone. To, to little, I, I think there's no reason and there's no way in today's modern dentistry. Listen, Dentistry, today's dentistry is fancy chairs, yeah. cone beam, CAD cam, technology. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of money. Money, yeah. A lot of money. You know, and, and now it's expensive retail locations, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to get the visibility. Right. You know, the cost of doing dentistry has gone up. Yes. And so to, to mortgage or to, to divide that up by one versus two, you know, it doesn't make sense anymore. Right. And so whether that's a business partner where you have equity ownership, whether that's a, an associate, um, I, I don't want any dentist to practice alone anymore because it doesn't make sense. So that, that's my goal for dentistry. And I think, um, I don't think you need to double your practice to bring an associate. And I think you're ready now yeah. um, because you, can, you have a skill set to do more of the dentistry you like mm-hmm. and you'll be as productive mm-hmm. uh, anyway. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Yeah. I agree. All right, last couple of questions. Sure. What is something that you're struggling with? What's a struggle or challenge right now for you that you're willing to share with people? Hmm. The associate. The yeah, associate's <laughs> a big one. I'm, I have a couple, but I'm trying to think which one I want to share. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, let it out. No, uh, honestly, I think um, what you mentioned earlier, the whole burnout fatigue thing has really, and I don't know if COVID made it worse, <laughs> but... Um, you liked that resort life? I yeah. just, I'm, I, um, I'm tired and I'm feeling the burnout, but I think it's because I'm bored and I need to find something that's going to excite me again. Yeah to I don't know I just and that in combination with I'm a highly PPO driven mm-hmm. office and I want to so start and I want to like I want I feel like I need to maybe drop insurance there's a couple of things that are kind of adding to the mix for yeah. me um you know we're, we're on parallel paths yeah mm-hmm. yeah because um just, I was bored yeah I'm a highly we're a high PPO practice yeah and you know there's two ways to look at it okay you can drop PPOs Okay, but you're likely going to be solo. Well, that's the thing. I don't want to drop them if I bring an associate right. in, like, because I want the associate, you know, so. So, you know, I, I'm, what I'm saying is, in, is yeah. look, I could totally drop insurance today. Yeah. But I'll be by myself. Yeah. And then it's going gonna, it's gonna to curtail my flexibility that I want. Yeah. And so I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of you dropping insurance because I'm making the assumption that even with these PPOs, you're doing good. You're making good income, you know, you're supporting your lifestyle, all these things, okay? So why would we give that away? And that's what I think, too. But then there's, you know, we're, well, this goes back to the whole I need an associate because we're just so busy. We're booked Mm -hmm. out so far, and it's just me. And it's, you know, I get tired of hearing, like, Doc, we don't have any openings, and we, you know, you need to add another day, or we need to figure something out. Why is it always we got to add days? (laughs) Yeah, it is. Why can't it be? Can't we just get the patients to wait? The biggest thing is like, well, we don't work Saturdays, and we don't work Mondays, and I'm, you know, because I work, I've always worked Tuesday through Thursday. Yeah. And then I would work long days, but after COVID, we came back and kind of shortened it. It didn't make any difference on production. Right. Um, and then I was supposed to work two Fridays a month, which turned into like every Friday. Every Friday. Yeah. And now they're slowly, you know, we're slowly talking about, well, do we need to add a Monday? Do we need to add? So, well, it's not going to be me. I can't physically do that yeah. many days. You, you can, know? but you don't want to. I don't want to. You yeah. can't mentally do it. No, mentally. Yeah. You can physically not. do it. You're in good shape. Yeah. You can <laughs> physically do it. I can't physically do it, okay? <laughs> 
so yeah, so that's <clears throat> just, I mean, it's just a struggle. And that's where the whole association. Do you ever, do you ever get up and say, I opened and funded and built this practice to be what I want. And it's not what I, it's For not. For other people to tell me what to yeah, do. Yeah, pretty <laughs> like, much. Because I you, mean, what you just said, is I've, your, gone, yeah. I've gone through. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like. I feel like I'm losing control of my mm-hmm. own practice a little yeah. bit. Um, but we allow, become, we, we allow that to happen. Yeah. It's like become this, it's, it's a great practice and it's become this like machine and it's amazing. It can like, it's a, it's a great run practice. itself. Yeah. You've built can, it that yeah. way. I can describe it. But now exactly. you're losing let me, let me, control. Let me, yeah. Let me, let me, let me, let me, yeah. We're reading your mind. <laughs> well, let me tell you what happens. Okay. Because I went through this in 2012, 11, really? 12. Okay? okay. I, we were 16 members. Okay. Five, 16 members back then. Okay. okay. What year did you start? 2014, 15? Fif- January of 2015. Yeah. yeah so there were six of, I was the sixth. You were think. number six. Okay. And so I was, I didn't really count. I was an intern. Yeah, yeah you didn't count. <laughs> you weren't on the books. I was five and a half. <laughs> yeah. So about 2011, 2012, we were five team members. Okay. And then we got a sixth one or then we, get, we got a seventh one. And then I was like, why am I by myself having seven team members? And then I feel this, you, you start feeling this, my God, I got to work to feed the people. And it's not like I right. don't like them, okay? Right. And then we get busy because we get more people, we see more patients, and we get busier. And then the, when we get busier, like, oh, I need another hygienist. And then, exactly then next thing you know, yeah. you're ninth, you're the, you're the eighth yes. person. And then, you're, and then you, you're just like, dude, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> no, that's exactly right? what's going and, on. And, and so... So I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer, right? Okay, but what I am saying is you got we we it's not you, okay? We yeah. have to look in the mirror because you own it, right? You decide it's your practice. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel like I tell you this all no. the time. He's like, they're telling me I have to do this and I have to do this. I'm like, <laughs> you, your name is on the door. <laughs> Right, but but we're going through this in different time periods, okay? Mm -hmm. So I went through a period of about three or four years where it's great, okay? And then now I'm at a point where because, you know, I keep, I'm at a point now where I'm I'm scheduled 15 hours a week. So I work 10 to 4, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's what I'm scheduled. (laughs) Right, well, yeah. That's what I'm scheduled, right? It ends up being much No, of course, but what if I was scheduled 25 hours a week? Uh, No, it'd be Then it'd be just much, it'd be much more, right? Right. So at some point... What, what you have to do is you have to say, this is what I'm willing to minimum, absolutely commit to. And no, you're going to have to give a little bit more. Yeah. See, the problem is, is, is you gave a little bit more and you give a little bit more. So at some point, you got to cut. Norm. You got to cut. Yeah. You know, yeah. or you got to add. Yeah. And you, I, I yeah. think it, it, we got to add providers. Per, yes, 100%. Yeah, we got to add providers yeah. to get there. Because I don't want to give up what I've built. No. Right. You know. Yeah. So I don't was, think dropping insurance idea. is the answer. I yeah. think you should drop insurance. Yes. But your practice should not. But my practice should not. That's Yeah. And I think that was you know, that would be my ultimate goal. Um, because I don't want to lose the reputation right. that I have and I don't want to lose, you know, the people calling and wanting to get in. I love that. I love knowing people want to come yeah. in to see Because you're treating them so good. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, a, privilege. it's a good feeling. Like I feel like I've accomplished something that hey, you know, People are willing to wait a little bit right now to see me, but at the same time, I feel bad. Like I don't want them to have to wait that long. And then the other, the other thing that scares me about the associate thing is, you know, will patients want to see an associate? Sure. Or do they some will, some won't. Right. And so what then there's that do? whole thing. And so, but it's we all part of the that. process. It's, I know. It's, listen, mm-hmm. yeah. it's it's really it. Your team when they say, "Oh, he's great," or yeah. "She's great," yeah. The patients are like, oh, well, she's been there forever. So if yeah. they trust her, then I trust him. You know? Good point. Yeah, that's true. You know, so, and there's some patients that won't. But here's yeah. the great right. news. They'll pay you your fee now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's uh-huh. true. You know, yeah. Oh, and yeah. the, or they'll say, oh, no, no, no. I only, you know, I only want to see Dr. Dejani. And you're like, okay, well, she's out of network. But our associate, I'll see the associate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There no, you go. Funny sure. how that works. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and that's what I'm finding now. So my goal is is to be outside of all insurance plans, okay. outside of Blue Cross Blue Shield, because I'm in the medical network for the amount of sleep that we do. Sure. So I got, I have to. Okay. Uh, so my goal personally is for me to be out of all the networks. 
But that's just this year, so yeah. that's 20 years in for people yeah, listening. It's a tr- yeah, and it took me four or five years to get comfortable with yeah. it mentally. And, and and it's been more mental comfort than financial yeah. comfort. Yeah. I think you started to drop one by one. One like by one. Three Did you years feel ago? like after you dropped your first one, like it just became easier for you to come Yeah, you know, well, <laughs> like I would. <laughs> I was so scared because the first one I dropped was 25% of our practice was MetLife. Well, so that's the thing. Yeah, I, I want dropped the, MetLife. The first one I suggested to my office manager, she's like, um, no. She's like, that's like half our pay. I'm like, it's not half of our pay patients but i mean it's a big you know so that's the scary part yeah so but i i want to encourage you not to drop any of them until i have an associate Again, that's my that's yeah. that's, so my, that's, office, that's my very so biased. That the office can that's stay. my yeah. very bi- I, yeah. I I hate giving advice like this, but that's my very biased view of this. Well, that's what I thought in my head. Yeah. That's what my it, it worked out really well because he dropped MetLife. Patients called, said, "Do you accept MetLife?" Yes, we accept MetLife. Okay, right. I want to come in as a patient. They want implants. Oh well, I thought you were in network. Yes, our office is in network. Yeah. And I'll I'll do implants for the MetLife fee. Sure, yeah. I'm happy to. Right. It's. Like it's the almost same. the closest <laughs> my fee anyway. Yeah. You know? But then yeah. they'll do their general dentistry with, with the associate. associate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and so so I, I don't think, it's one thing if you're doing a PPO practice and you're barely making money. Yeah. Then that's a different situation. Sure, sure. But I And I'm making assumptions here, okay? Because you haven't complained about money yet. No, so right, no. You know, <laughs> most people don't come on podcasts no, and complain about it. Right? Usually <laughs> just, <laughs> no, I, my complaint is fatigue. Right. But, but see, we've... What I found is I've made a great living being a PPO dentist. I know. More than I've ever believed I've deserved, right? Yeah. So why would I give it away? I, it just doesn't make any sense to no, me. I know. So it's one thing if you're taking a lot of HMOs and you're taking, pra- you know, yeah. th- those yeah. plans that don't pay well, yeah. then yeah, you got to drop those all together. But yeah, you know, I, I will tell you to get where you want to get to, you're going to have to change your mindset. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's going to be hard for you, mm-hmm. but you're going to have to. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're going to have to bring somebody else in or you're going to have to make the decision that I'm going to be alone. And there's nothing really wrong with that. Just know that there's goods and bads that come with that. Yeah. And, and, and I think you're going to have to learn to say no to patients. You know, that's going to be the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing for me right yeah. now is yeah. still is to say no. Somebody, you know, somebody needs a root canal crown and we're like, yeah, we can't see them for six weeks. I'm like, yeah, I'll just come in Thursday and that, do that. I do that all, every yeah. week. I do that at least once. Yeah. At least once. You know, but see, what I found is... And my wife is so good at this. There's a hard and fast rule with her. Yeah. Like I'm leaving at 12 yeah. and I'm done. Yeah. And what happens is I've set the tone that he'll be available. Yeah. I think I've done the same thing. You know, and, and so that means that. My and she just won't answer her phone. <laughs> <laughs> my wife just. No, She's she, like, I'm busy. Yeah. But so the interesting thing is, is I've tried to do that a couple of times where I'm like, you know, I'm going to be more assertive about mm-hmm. saying no. Like I need to start doing this for myself. Yeah. And the few times I did it, it felt really good. <laughs> or she'll um, FaceTime so close that you can yeah. only see her face. So you yeah. can't see where yeah. she's yeah. at. It's a, it's a gift to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not easy for. Like, but really she's built it that way. Yeah. I mean, she. I'm That's sure right. she wasn't that way yeah. forever. Yeah. That's a great. So th- those. But. But we have to, okay, because yeah. well, here, here's where we're walking down a road where we'll walk away too early because it's not our practice anymore, mm-hmm. and it is our practice. And you guys are young. And your team members just do what you let them do. Yeah. And they don't yeah. do it. They don't do it out of malice at all. No, I know. Because they love yeah. you. My yeah. team members no, love me. Yeah. They want. No, they're doing it because they want to make more. They want yeah. the production. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. want the money. Well, you and know? they're they're feeding into the image of the practice, and they want it to do well. They don't yeah. want to work somewhere where no. it's not a great they place be to be. Yeah. They they want to be proud of where they're at. So. That's of part of it. Yeah. All right. So we're going to end our interview. I got my little deck here. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to get a little shuffle going here. <laughs> this is new. We've, We've done it a couple, couple of times. times yeah. yeah. So it's called Pretty Pod new. Decks. It's an interview deck. This is the second edition. Poddecks.com. Okay. They're not a sponsor or anything. Okay. I paid for these. We don't have sponsors. We do. I, you see. <laughs> no, <can> we <laughs> are sponsored by 3D Dennis. If you have not <laughs> been down to Raleigh to our training center, we would love you to come visit. So let's pick. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> let's pick three cards. That is our And then don't sponsor. look at them. Give them okay. to me. Okay. That's one, two. There you go. Perfect. All right. I'm going to ask you three random questions here. Interesting question. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we haven't even heard most of them. <laughs> what makes you feel old? Oh, I just said you guys yes. were young. I literally just said that. 
I'll just show you. Okay. These gray hairs. Right? <laughs> These gray hairs. You know, there's, there's, there's That's stuff. fine. You can cover those up. That Dude, Mona, learned, I learned how to do that. <laughs> yeah. I did, it, I did it live. I, I, yeah. <laughs> she I never let that. me do it again. And then I did it. <laughs> so gray hairs make you feel old. Absolutely. Good news is, is we can fix it. Either yeah, you can yeah, shave all. You can totally. be like me and shave T-bone all. T-Bone can fix it. <laughs> L- listen, I'm happy to you do would it think right now. he would be good at that, right? <laughs> like as like precise and <laughs> oh. oh, this is an interesting one. What's something weird that you recommend everyone tries at least once? Ooh. I think we should make people say the first thing that comes to their mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if this is weird, but it's like one of my favorite things is ketchup sandwiches. Ketchup sandwiches. <laughs> yes. You're so Indian. It's weird. ridiculous. Why don't, you say Mag- Indian Why don't you say Maggie's ketchup? <laughs> no, it's not Maggie, just Heinz. <laughs> just ketchup and bread? Ketchup and white bread. Nothing Wonder, else? Wonder white bread. How much ketchup do you put on the sandwich? Like you peanut butter? It. So it's like peanut butter sandwich. No, no, it's ketchup. You, you, It soaks into the bread a little bit. It's really good. <laughs> I used to make mayonnaise sandwiches growing up. I ate peanut butter sandwiches growing up. I used to have mayonnaise and cheese sandwiches. And that's oh why you gosh. wore those husky jeans. Well, oh, there's God. many reasons I wore husky that's jeans. That's so funny. Oh, speaking of sandwiches. <laughs> is a This is going to a Chicago in too. Is a hot dog a sandwich, and why? A hot dog is a sandwich, because it's in between two pieces of bread. What's your favorite? Do you like Chicago hot dogs? Absolutely. Chicago do, you eat, do you eat meat? Absolutely everything, as long yeah. as it's dead. As long yeah. as it's dead. <laughs> 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 what, what's your favorite Chicago hot dog? Uh, Chicago style. So what does that mean? It's got tomato, onion, green lettuce, relish, and uh, the um, sport peppers and tomatoes. Wow. Well, Pretty much that's everything. Awesome. That sounds like a sausage. Stuff. Like and it's like an the, Italian it is, sausage, like not the, a hot dog. I like the really bright green fake relish. Like we were talking about the fake pistachio. Heinz, really, yeah. Heinz relish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, bright green like fluorescent. Next thing you know, she's going to be eating relish sandwiches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dimple, how can people get in touch with you? What's your email address? Um, it's my first name, Dimple. D i m p l e. Yep. D d s at Yahoo. Back you know up. Yahoo is way out of style. I know, so you know, I know, but I you know the modern people have it. I have a Gmail. Gmail. I do have a Gmail, but I just but don't just what you use. I know yeah. it's fine. It's there. It's there for all my junk email stuff. Eh, the <laughs> Yahoo email. <laughs> no, my Gmail is. Yeah, I just want to know where to sell the bill to. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what social media st- uh, stuff are you on? So um, I to? am on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. What's your Instagram? Don't tell people your Snapchat. That might get bad. Yeah, no. <laughs> my my personal one is Dimps, D-I-M-P-S, 121. Okay. And then the Heights Down Gallery is my yeah. office, which I use more of my the office yeah. one. So on, everyone give her a follow on well, Instagram. So what, wait, what are those Heights dating down. app ones? Uh, that You're not on any of those? No. Tinder? No dating no, apps. Tinder, Bumblebee. Bumble, yeah, or no. <laughs> What's the other ones? Brazzers? Uh, no, oh my I don't think so. so many <laughs> Beardedman.com, <laughs> farmers only. <laughs> Not any of those? No, 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 no. Jews only. They have ones where they're like you know, me and Mona, uniforms too. Yeah. Me, me and Mona met on IndianDating.com. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's cool. Back in 1999 <laughs> before it was popular. <laughs> where he could have killed her and put her on Dateline. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. To, in that regard, <laughs> thank you, Dimple, for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. It was great yeah. to talk you to you guys. It was. It was uh, great. Uh, again, uh, please help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes and Spotify, sharing this on social media, uh, and supporting 3D Dentists. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for listening to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal. Remember to keep striving for excellence and we'll catch you on the next episode.